Hello guys and gals, I am Paladin, and welcome back to Pal Plays Okami. Last episode, we obtained the powers of Drunk Sheep, the ability to slow down time at our leisure. This episode, we're going to be using this ability to get past the guards that had blocked one of our paths. Why am I talking like this? Because this is the voice of all spiders. All spiders who are destined to kill. All spiders who are destined to block our paths. All spiders who love to ride their Harley Davidson. Okay, uh, now th with Veil of Mist, uh, one thing I noticed that I didn't do last episode, I noticed this in post, uh, was that whenever I used Veil of Mist, I would use it like this. I would draw two parallel lines, and that would work. But actually, that isn't the best way to use this technique. I wanted to point this out now, at the beginning of this video, instead of just doing it and hope and hoping you guys would notice. Um, to do Veil of Mist, it, you can actually just do two uh, horizontal lines. Actually, I'm not even sure... Yeah, okay, they do have to be horizontal, but you could start with the lower one and then the upper one, and it will still register just as long as there are two horizontal lines. With that in mind, actually the best way to, the quickest way rather, uh, it's not really the best because it doesn't really do anything that um, that just doing it the slow way wouldn't do, but the fastest way is to draw two horizontal lines by just kind of swiping with the uh, brush and just tapping Z a couple times. It just works really well and really quickly. So it is the fastest and most convenient way to use Veil of Mist, uh, basically just making it the speed of Power Slash. So, with that in mind, let's go ahead and get past this blocking spider with Veil of Mist, and run past it at the speed of... I don't know if that's sound, but... Man, if it's not the speed of sound, it is something really close, because all time pretty much stops when we use that technique. I mean, we're pro... Think of how we must look to an outsider, to someone who isn't being... Well, they're being slowed down, but since we're not affected by our own technique, we're still moving at normal speed... Oh, you're doing that. Watch this. Just watch. Okay? He start, he's lowering his foot right now. So I use Veil of Mist, I just escape it, like a flash. Could you picture how fast Amaterasu must be moving? Look at that, I'm just going right by the broom. And he's just thinking about raising his foot by the time I, I pass him. That's just really cool. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and slow down time here and just whiz right past that broom, like it's stationary. I mean, think of how fast Amaterasu must be moving. That, that's insane. And, okay, uh, is he gonna stop? No, he can't stop me from there. Uh, there are some flies right there, or exoskeletons. I actually rather think they're exoskeletons, because they're hollow, but even so, they look like something you'd see in some sort of zombie film or game, just with the gr things growing out of it. Uh, let's see, there are no collectibles here for us to nab, so let's continue on. We're now in uncharted territory. Which contains, uh, apparently, uncharted territory means that we're going to be encountering lots of fountains. And a treasure chest, which we can have E soon bust open for us. And it gives us an Infinity Stone. I don't know, whenever I see an Infinity Stone, I always think it's, it's an equipable and not a uh, uh, consumable. I just always think that. I don't know why. Um, it just It's something that I've always done. I guess it just seems like an equipable. I mean, how would you use a stone? So anyway, uh... Oh, no! So anyway, uh, I, I just died. Uh, <laughs> nothing else going on except the fact that I just died. Uh, what I was going to say is, just if you remember, just use water on the fountains to lower them. Although, I don't think we've ever had to use the fountains as platforms. I did not use that. I used water spout. I don't think we've ever used them as passageways before. Not passageways, but pathways. Uh, we've always used them as like something to trip something. Like uh, in the moon cave where we used one to signal one of the imps to lower the water level. We've never used them as an actual like teeter-totter platform, which is new. I'm glad that they're reusing things, but in different ways. That's really nice. Huh? Hey, look over there, Ami. Isn't that the emperor? I'd heard that he was sick in bed, but I never expected him to be the source of that funky mist. 
Now, how are we going to straighten out this raw oof? I mean, he, we're too big to fit through his mosquito net. Hmm. Uh... Well, it doesn't go all the way up to the ceiling, which is a very ineffective mosquito net, but maybe we can climb up these platform spiders to get over the mosquito net. That seems very plausible. So, this statement scroll here, I'm not actually going to show the battle with it, but I will go in... I will... Uh, conquer it just so I can tell you guys what enemies were inside so if you excuse me I will be right back so in that demon scroll were a was a thunder doom mirror and a wind doom mirror so just two enemies but man they gave me a lot of money that battle because I perfected it which it uh, wind doom mirrors are actually a joke now especially and also thunder doom mirrors uh, now that I have Veiled Mist, because they just move so slowly that I can kill them, and they never even have a chance! Oh, wow. Oh, that w Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Well, here's a new enemy, uh, an Ice Doom Mirror, which, uh, if I remember right, it has the same strategy as all the others, just keep hitting it, and also a Fire Doom Mirror, which we haven't encountered thus far. Uh, really? Really, I believe their strategy is exactly the same as the other, and uh, other, um, as their, uh, -da -ba -da -ba -da, their ice lips and fire eye counterparts. Let's go ahead and slow this down. And I'm hoping that the fire do mirror uses his fire so I can actually kill this guy with the floor pincher. No. Jump! Well, that's sad. Uh, I'm not gonna get the floor finishers on either of these, sadly. Actually, no, wait. I will get on, I will get it on the Fire Doom Mirror. This actually, actually, this is the first time we've ever encountered two new enemies in the same battle. I have no idea how that's going to work for, uh, the, the enemy bio. There we go, let's go and kill him. And his floral finish, or what, what? I instantly got his floral fin- okay. Whatever, that was really strange, and I didn't encounter- didn't expect to encounter the- those guys, and also, <laughs> that was- that was a really jerkish fall. Like, I fell right into the demon scroll, so I- I didn't even have time to do anything. But, you guys saw the enemy bios, and <laughs> that took me re uh, way too much by surprise. That was really bad. They probably placed those demon scrolls down there just to catch me off guard. So yeah, I apologize. Uh, I apologize if I didn't really go over their strategy, but they are actual—they're just clones of the Fire Eye and the Ice Lip. So I didn't really find it that important to talk about how to defeat them, since you guys pretty much already know. And also, the enemy bio was enough information right there. So anyway, uh, I have no idea what I was talking about before, except the fact that. That Shami Zen down there, uh, I've tried it before, you can power slash the strings and it actually doesn't do anything. Which is really sad, actually, you know what, I, I apologize, but... Oh, apparently you're not supposed to jump into the spider web. Uh, what I'm saying, this episode is not going how I wanted it to go. I didn't examine this, but you can. Check out the Shami Zen, wonder if the Emperor likes music. Oh, uh, whatever, we got more important things to do. Yeah, but like I was saying, you can power slash the strings, it does nothing. You can headbutt it, it does nothing, which is really sad. I mean, the game designers missed an opportunity right there to put in a cool little easter egg, but... Hey, I can't complain too much. The game design is already brilliant. I mean, anything more and it would be... Uh... Xenoblade? <laughs> uh, comparing this game to Xenoblade. Or rather, Earthbound, I guess. I just need to stop talking about that Shamisen, because I'm still on that. Okay, so, like a uh, new topic, because I can't say like I was saying. Um, this area, the rafters. I had mentioned episode before last, how this game, or this area rather, parallels Legend of Zelda Minish Cap a little bit, just because it was made by Capcom, and they did the whole shrunken thing, and... Just the areas of the Imperial Palace when you're when you're shrunk, and uh, Minish Woods in Minish Cap, 
they're so similar, like it's insane how similar the two areas are. But this is yet another similarity. Um, in Minish Cap, again, I don't feel like I'm spoiler spoiling anything because I'm not spoiling any story elements. I'm just talking about one specific thing in the game. But in Minish Cap, there is a part of the game when you can enter people's houses uh, while you are shrunk in while you're the size of a Minish. And one of the things you have to do to like travel between people's houses are um, go on the on their rafters and their enemies specific to that area, a few enemies, and it and you're going in the rafter, rafters to reach places that you couldn't reach in their houses before. And that is so similar to this area, like it's it's amazing. And there has to be treasure just over there. No, there's not. That's a shame. So yeah, it's just, it's just really cool how similar th this area is to Minch Cap. Okay, these platform spiders are special, not only because they're green, but because when you stand on them, they move really fast. Like, look at this guy. Watch. Look at that. That is much too fast. So you need to slow down time to make platforming a lot easier. Same with the spiders, because as you progress on the rafters, the spiders will get faster and faster. Also, I should note, it's really strange that they give you a map for this area, because, first of all, it's so late in the area that the map's pretty much useless, because this is the only place to explore, and it's fairly, I almost fell, it's fairly linear. Um, there's not much, there isn't, there actually, there are pretty much no alternate routes you can take that don't have dead ends. I mean, it's not like I could have gone to the left here and like kind of cheated the system. I can't go through this spider web. Like it is impossible for me to do. This area is very linear. I have no idea why they give us a map uh, both s so late in the area and for s such a uh, and also because you know there's it's linear. So anyway, that's really strange. Uh, these spiders are very tough. You just want to do this one or two sections at a time. And this last spider, once it speed, once time goes back to normal, this is like crazy fast. This is impossible. How can this be so fast? Like, this isn't, this isn't even physically possible with the gravity because the gravity's fairly close to that of real life. And for something to swing this fast, it would have to be, uh, it would have to be influenced by some very strong external force, but it's not. And so just, it's really strange, like, it, it, this spinning is so fast and so noisy that it's almost obnoxious. It's almost a little bit violent with how this is. It's just so fast, but once again, when we slow down time, it's as slow as a snail. Of course, of course, when I say it's as slow as a snail, I fail. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. Actually, he's still fast when he's slowed down. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to sit here for just one moment before I head to the end of this. While it does look like a dead end, this is actually where we want to go. And I would like to, hopefully, Amaterasu, could you please sleep? Please? I need to heal. Real bad, Amaterasu. Uh, she's, she's not feeling it right now. She's definitely not Shulk right now. She's not really feeling it. So I guess I'll just use an uh, Holy Bone S. We have 20 of them, so I don't feel like I am depriving myself of any healing powers in a, in a battle if we get into one. So anyway, with uh, almost full health, let's go ahead and walk to the end of this rafter. Check it out, Ami. The Emperor is directly below us. It's like the Royal Oof's mouth is just begging for us to dive on in. Ha! Huh, that's exactly what I thought, Isun. As soon as I saw the Emperor's mouth with the poisonous gases uh, emanating out of it, my first thought was, man, I should really jump in his mouth. I mean, I mean, you guys probably thought the same thing, right? <laughs> uh, hashtag obvious sarcasm is obvious. But hey, like Isun's motto, 
Leap before we think! Are we inside the Emperor's body now? Wow, Ami, you're on Fearless Wolf. This should be the fastest way to get th to the root of the problem. Hey, what's this funny looking thing here? Oh, I know. It's that dangly thing that hangs down the back of the throat. I bet if we tic tickled it, this royal oof would sneeze. That's probably our best bet for getting out of here. But, let's save that for later. We're going, to, we're going the other way now. Uh, what is that? Uh, uvula? Yeah, the uvula, I think. Possibly. I think that's what it's called. Uh, so if we hit this, we can leave, but I have no interest in leaving at all. And also, why is it upside down? Uh, let me do some science here. Um, if I am up, if I am laying on my back, I'm actually sliding down my chair to lay on my back. I just want to figure out why this uvula is upside down. Pardon my geekism. Uh, so if you lay down, it actually would not be upside down. It would be... I have no idea. I can't figure this out. <laughs> Let's just leave before I, I make this any more awkward. Uh, I I am a nerd. I'm, I'm a major nerd. Okay, so... Hmm. You, actually, now that I think of it... Even more, even more parallels are drawn here to the Zelda series, the Zelda titles, because um, in Ocarina of Time, you go inside, like, uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but hey, <laughs> if you guys, if you guys have not been spoiled by Ocarina of Time, man, that's almost impossible, uh, or spoiled for Ocarina of Time, in Ocarina of Time, you go inside a giant fish, and that's what ha what's happening here. So this is very similar to Ocarina of Time right here. Man, so close. Okay. Uh, I don't want to save right now because I would like to go through this door because this episode is definitely not over. I would like to go through here. Uh, but first, I would actually like to cut ahead because I want Amaterasu to take a nap and heal first. So I will be right back. Hopefully she'll actually sleep and I won't be here for like 20 minutes. Okay, I got tired of waiting for Matarasu to take a nap, even though it only took about it took about a minute before I got impatient enough to actually use a Holy Bone S and uh, refill the last remaining uh, empty one and a half solar units of my health. And also, I took that opportunity off screen to equip Sumigari as my sub, so I now have a sub glaive in addition to a main glaive. So with those preparations actually almost out of the way, I would like to use one Traveler's Charm to get my Godhood up to what level? I have no clue. Can I even see that? No, I cannot, sadly. Uh, but yeah, my Godhood, I believe, is now up to level two or three. So yeah, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and head through this door. Wonder what's in there. I have a feeling we're in for trouble. You're not going to turn back now, are you, Ami? One turn back? No way. Good answer. Okay, you know the drill. Leap before you think. Okay, <laughs> a very redundant golden gate. It's not even necessary. There was a save mirror back there, and <laughs> you could just go back and save. So I have no idea why the golden gate's here. And <laughs> actually, for that matter, I have no idea why the golden gate exists. This is so, so weird. But with that out of the way, we are in the esophagus? Actually, this looks more indicative of, like, intestines to me. So, we're either in the stomach or the bowels, one of the two. And from what looks like down there, there's no indication. Although, man, it's like all infected down there. What on earth did this guy catch? Well, we're about to find out. No way. This is insane. That mist. It's alive, Ami.
Meet Blight. Under my control, this body breathes evil mist over the city. And you, Mutt, you dare attempt to clear the skies of my poison? Waging battle with me inside a human body will be no easy task. Even now, Goldmail, the mighty sword, cries out for your blood. Come, step forward so that I, the indomitable Blight, may cut you down. Haha, <laughs> I'll step forward alright. You're a real piece of work, Blight. Better say your prayers. You uncultured wretch. Be warned, we are in the very bowels of the Emperor. If we fight here, his body will not. Give me a break. A little action here will help him wake up. But never mind that. You're the one behind that poison mist. Possessing a human body may be an elaborate trick, but it ends now. With my supreme blade, Denkumaru, I, the magnificent Isun, shall rend that hunk of junk you call a sword. Not without us, you won't. Okay, the battle with Blight. Starting off, it's actually a very easy battle if you know how to uh, know when to take him. When he starts to do what it looks like uh, is drawing his sword, you want to immediately use Veiled Mist to slow time down. Watch out because the sword that he holds in front of him, Gold Nail, still has a hitbox and will hit you even while you're slowing time down. Now, if you manage to down him during that rush attack, which is almost, which is instantaneous if you don't slam, slow time down, uh, you will knock Do Gold Nail from his grasp and you'll be able to attack it. Uh, I suggest that you do so with charged glaive attacks, but immediately you want to move away from it because it will attack you if you stick around too long. Okay, uh, now it will reanimate Blight and you want to keep an eye out for that sword drawing attack again. That's his tail right there. That is another thing he will do. He will warp to a different point in the in the battlefield, usually right on top of you. It's a little bit different from his uh, his lunge attack because if we slow time down here, he is not holding the sword in front of him and thus has no hitbox. But also we can't th thus we can't knock Gold Nail from his grasp. This is his third attack. He will have a ring of swords, much like Waka did, um, and Gold Nail is one of those swords. If you power slash Gold Nail, it will. Uh, Deanimate Blight, and you can attack Gold, Ma Gold Nail, but the other swords will still be active. Instead, you want to attack all of them at once by getting a horizontal position with the camera and move in on Gold Nail, because Gold Nail is how you actually deal damage. You're really not dealing damage to Blight at all. Uh, Gold Nail is the real enemy, it is the power behind Blight. Okay, Blight, what do you got? Oh, warp attack. Let's go ahead and get some good damage here and it should also be noted that when you are when you're not using um, veiled mist he is invulnerable the rest of the time so I just want to make note of that because that's, that explains why I'm not attacking blight most of the time I'm waiting for him attack and I'm being counter offensive now actually I, sh I actually want to switch to uh, devout beads mostly because they have the machine gun oh wait no I didn't mean to do that uh, devout beads as my sub so that when I move away from Gold Nail, uh, I, I will be able to still deal damage by shooting it from a safe distance. Albeit uh, the fact that it's very little damage, it's still damage and it's safe. So anyway, uh, he is on his last third of health. So this should, probably won't finish him off, but it'll come very close. And notice I have not taken one hit of damage at all. Actually, this might finish him off right here. Another thing that I advise is slowing down time while you're attacking Gold Nail, because you can get more hits in uh, in a short amount of time. And oh my word, are you kidding me? Okay, uh, one more hit and he's gone. Hopefully that won't make my time rating on time any worse. But hey, I'll take it. I'll take what I can get. No, uh, no damage. That's very good. Done.
You obtained Divine Instrument, Exorcism Beads. Purifying Rosary that contains the power of Holy Light. Blight, a disease residing within the Emperor's body and born of the intense hatred and evil of the cursed sword Goldnail, was the source of the acrid mist that had plagued the capital's citizenry. But even a creature so despicable and full of hatred was no match for our intrepid heroes Matarasu and Isun. Blight's defeat brought with it a lifting of the acrid fog. The Emperor, now freed of the evil's influence, returned to normal. Amaterasu and the others had earned a brief moment of respite. However, evil conspired to cut the tranquility scene short. From Goldnail's defeated form rose the familiar blackness, the spirit of evil and hatred that had resided within the sword. Black as midnight and deep as the sea rose slowly skyward. Make no mistake, this was undoubtedly one of the foul spirits that dispersed from Orochi's broken body. Quickly and steadily it rose. Then, it shot off toward the distant sea and over the horizon. It moved with purpose, as if to rendezvous, as if to a rendezvous with the lost friend. Amaterasu and the others had no time to rest. If they were truly to restore the capital to its normal routine, they still had to deal with the threat of the water dragon. This tale's far from over. Hey, you! Aren't you forgetting something? You had it coming, big time, gas bag. You aren't even in the same league as the gr uh, magnificent Isun. Well, Furball, that's that. How about one of those victory howls? Oh, wait, I almost forgot. That babe Kaguya is still locked up. Ami, seems Pops is still snoozing away. How about we just take control and make him unlock her cell? Why bother with waking him up to explain to explain any, everything anyway? Huh? You don't get it, do you? Watch and learn, my furry friend. First, I'll stir up his stomach like this, and then... What the? Yikes! What the? Hey, are you okay, Ami? Looks like we managed to make the Emperor stand up. Come on, we gotta get this royal oof moving. Let's get him over to where they're holding Kaguya. Okay... We are taking control for th of the Emperor, uh, first time in the game that we're able to take control of another character. Uh, I, get this, I guess this controlling humans business is harder than it looks. We got one, we got it, we gotta get Big Shot over here, over to Kaguya's cell, not this way. Okay, head over for, head for her cell now, I don't know why I can't read anymore. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> I'll tell ya. This is one of the funniest animations of the game. Your Highness, you're well enough to, t to walk around again? That Kaguya girl was in prison just as you ordered, sire. But she's done no wrong, so I can't understand why... Er, um, not that I'm doubting your bountiful wisdom, Your Highness. Better not, or else uh, I'll hit you with my stomach here. Yeah, you you bet you know better know better in the future. I'll knock you off this railing and into the pond down there. You you behave, or I'll for be forced to punch you with my stomach again. Oh please, not Emperor, not anything but that. Don't tempt me. I'll beat you with my stomach. <laughs> this is hilarious. Your Highness, I know you have already f refused to see a doctor, but surely it would be wise to seek treatment. Some people are even starting to say your illness is what's... Er, um, not that I think any of the sort, of course. You better not. Keep your, ma keep your mouth shut. I can prison you instead of that Kaguya girl, if you please. If that suits your fancy, you obey me in the future. <laughs> uh, are you the Emperor? But if you're here, 
Does that mean those two are... Oh dear, it's all my fault. How shall I ever apologize? Hmm, um... <clears throat> let's see. How about you start off by making me 100 dumplings? Huh? <laughs> Just pulling your leg, sweetie. That voice. You think we'd buy the farm that easy? The Emperor was being controlled by a nasty stomach virus. But we took, we took care of it. Things should get back to normal soon. Now, let's make this royal oof open your cell. Let's see. Oh, thank you. I thought I'd never get out of here, uh, out of there. No time for chit chat, bamboo girl. We freed the emperor from that monster controlling him. But things are still a bit dicey around here. We're gonna hightail it out of this place. I suggest you do the same. Now, let's see here. Oh yeah, could you, could you, coo? Oh man, it's good to be back to our normal size, even though Amaterasu probably is in dire need of a bath. <laughs> I can tell what you want to do, Ami. Not take a bath, if that's... Oh, no. Uh, I agree. That'll make it... That'll make it feel like we've set things straight here. I mean, we've already freed that bamboo girl. Now, give one of those victory howls to wake up the Emperor. You? Well, I didn't do great on time, but damage is uh, definitely something uh, I'm happy with. Perfect on damage and 22,000 yen. Also, that'll be it for this episode. Next time, I'm honestly not sure what we're going to do. Uh, we could help out the citizens of Seon City now that they're back on their feet and no longer sick, hopefully, now that the fog is cleared. Or we could try to talk to Queen Himiko now that the Emperor's recovered. Maybe her guard has been let down and she, she can uh, freely roam the city again and stop praying. Or I have no idea. We'll have to see you then. Uh, I release new episodes of Kami Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Saturdays are long episodes. If, and if you like this episode, comment. If you didn't like this episode, then comment and tell me how I could make next episode so that you would like it. I'll see you guys next time for another Pal Plays Okami.